What is good everyone, Forrest Walker here. And in this video, I cover color theory and combinations and apply it to photography and even more specifically street photography or unposed, uncontrolled photography. And this is part two of a seven part series called Capturing Color, where I go in depth covering color photography and different ways to help you learn to improve your color work. So let's get into it for this video, color theory. And first off, why is it important to learn color theory? Well, of course, artists and painters, they learn color theory in school because it does help them utilize colors in different ways and be able to see and apply color to their work and make it stronger and make it more connected to their vision. But learning it definitely benefits photographers too. And when you see more studio work or pose work like advertising, you definitely see color theory applied, but it can help candid street photographers too because just being able to see how color theory works and you see it outside on the street and you recognize it and you know what's gonna look good in a photo, which is extremely important when you're out there. But we're gonna get more into that. First, let's get into the basics of color theory. So you have a color wheel here. There are three orders of color. You have your primary, your secondary, and your tertiary. And on the color wheel here, we have the RYB color. So that's red, yellow, and blue. Those are your primary colors. Those are your pure colors that all other colors are derived from. And your secondary colors would be equal parts of two primaries. So you would have a red and a blue would make a violet or purple. You have yellow and blue, which makes green. And then you have yellow and red, which makes orange. So those are your secondary colors. And from there, you do have tertiary colors too, which are primary and a secondary mixed together. So those are your three orders of colors. And when it comes to primary colors, those are the ones that really stand out. Secondary colors stand out too, but to a lesser degree. And then your tertiary colors stand out even less. So those are more kind of mood and atmosphere. Also when it comes to cold or cool colors and your warm and your hot colors, the cool colors are your blues and your greens, while your hot or warm colors are your reds and your oranges and yellows. Those colors have an impact on the viewer. Psychologically cool, you think of warm colors, they, they create a different type of feeling from the viewer when you see these colors. So these are things to note too in photography and art and everything. And from there getting even a little deeper into color, you have your hue, saturation, and your luminosity. And if you do any editing, your editing software is gonna have an HSL slider. So H, hue, saturation, S, luminosity, L. And hue would be the specific color on the spectrum of colors. Saturation would be the intensity or the amount of color. And luminosity would be the brightness of color. And if you play around with that on your sliders, you'll see how it changes. But when it comes to the natural world, you see these two. You have different hues, different colors, and then you also have different saturation intensities, and then you have different luminosity. And one thing I'll talk about a lot in this series is how light and color are connected. Color is light on the spectrum, but light also affects color greatly outside. So the amount of sunlight you have will affect the luminosity of your colors in your scene and your photo. And moving on from those basics of color theory, now we can really get into how we can apply it to our color work. And that's in different color schemes and combinations that we see out there. First off, one of the main color schemes or combinations are complementary colors. And complementary colors are just colors that lie on the opposite ends of the color wheel. So you would have your red and your green would be complementary colors. You would have your orange and your blue being complementary colors or yellow and a violet. So since complementary colors lie furthest away from each other on the color wheel, they create the most contrast and stand out against each other the most. But like the name says, they also complement each other and create balance. So they look really good together. And you can see the strength of complementary colors utilized in many places. You can think of even companies and their logos or sports teams colors is a big one. Like in the NBA or basketball, you have Los Angeles Lakers. Their colors are purple and gold or purple and yellow, complementary colors. Or you have the New York Knicks, blue and orange. Complementary colors just look great together while still standing apart but not fighting each other. And in a photo, they can look amazing. And you can see that in a lot of photography work. And throughout this series, I'll show examples of how these different color schemes work well together in a photo, especially in parts six and seven, where we really go in depth on photos. But knowing and seeing how complementary colors work well together will allow you to look at different scenes and know how they'll look in a photo. So that's complementary colors, but then you also have your analogous colors, which are just two colors that lie next to each other in the color wheel. So that would be like your red and orange, and would also include your orangish red. So those colors that lie near each other, they create more of a harmony. They're pleasing to look at together, but they don't 
have that same vibrance or contrast that a complementary color would. So analogous colors are good for mood, atmosphere, maybe a background and things like that usually, but there's a lot of different ways you can use it. And then you have monochromatic colors. And when people hear monochromatic, they usually think black and white, but it really just means one color value or one base hue. And from that one base hue, you can extend in different shades, tints, or tones. What different shades mean is basically that you're adding black to that specific color, which makes it darker. And then tint would be the opposite, where you're adding white and making it lighter. And that doesn't mean brighter, that just means lighter. And then tone would be like adding a neutral gray, which just kind of dulls it. So just think of that in color. So you could have a red, but some of it could be darker red, some of it could be lighter, some of it could be duller, but it's still all at the base red. And this might be a little more rare to find out in the natural world, but you could have a background that's monochromatic, and then you could just wait for a certain other color to get in there. So you could imagine a monochromatic background and one color in front of it, how much that color would stand out, especially if it was far away from it on the color wheel. Or you could have monochromatic, just like a gray, gray buildings, and then color in front. It would really bring that color out. Now there is more complex color schemes like triad, tetradic, or split complementary, but you don't really need to know those. You can if you want, but the ones that we went over, complementary, analogous, and then monochromatic, those are the, the basic ones you need to know and that will help you out there. And there are other color combinations you could have. You could have a color in front of a non-color, like a black or white or gray, and it would stand out. Or you could have two of the same color exactly. So either if it was in front of each other, it would disappear into the background, which could create an interesting effect, or you could just have maybe three people are wearing, all wearing red, the same color. So different things like that can add to a photo, but learning all these different color combinations and then being able to recognize them out there without thinking about it, and then knowing how it's gonna look in a photo can really improve your photography and have you taking better color photos. And you can help apply the different things you've learned in this video and color theory by doing different exercises, challenging yourself. You can look for different colors when you're out there or specific colors or specific color combinations. And it's not to take good photos when you're doing the exercise because really you take the best photos when you're free, not looking at one for one thing. But if you are able to challenge yourself and learn to recognize it, then once you're out there and you are thinking freely, then you'll recognize these things without even thinking about it. So that's a big thing to do. And that's a big thing to do in all your work experience, learning different things, learning what looks good, and then when you see it, you don't even have to think about it, you just react. And if you look at different photos, you'll notice some photographers have specific colors that they really are attracted to. Some big ones are red and yellow. I love the color red in photos, and that's definitely a common theme because it, it stands out in different photos so well and looks beautiful, and yellow too, it stands out a lot. So you'll see these colors in a lot of photos, because of color theory, because it looks good and stands out in a photo. And then you'll also notice what colors are really common out there photographing. Blues and oranges are super common. You can just go into your editor like Lightroom and play with the blue or orange saturation slider and your whole scene will change. You have the blue of the sky, but it's not just that, it reflects on surfaces, so the buildings and windows. If it's a blue sky, they'll get that reflection. And then also the sun, if it's sunny out there, the orange and yellow will reflect on the buildings. And it's just, you'll notice different surfaces, different buildings, like the concrete has a specific color that you might not even notice that it has orange in it or blue. So a lot of different things, the more you look at colors and look at color theory, you'll see how scenes can work together. There's also people, there's a lot of orange and skin color and that goes for all, all races. There's always some orange in there. So just recognizing the different colors in your scene, you can create better photos. So that brings us to the end of part two in this Capturing Color series. Next up is part three, where I go over different tips of how to see in color when you're out there photographing. So we're really gonna start focusing on more street photography and unposed work and how to see in color, how to see different things. Also applying the stuff we learned in this video here, part two, color theory and the different combinations. So get ready for that. That should be a good one for my Patreon subscribers. And thanks for watching. Until next video, cheers.